today's video we look at something that I've just worked through recently essentially when you use PowerShell you're basically already expecting to get a lot of work done you want to do a lot of things you develop a script you make the computer do all the work well I encountered a situation where I needed to get 12,000 things done and it was taking three or four days so I had a thought to myself if I could just divide that list of 12,000 into two or four lists of things to do and run four separate instances. But then I was looking at, well, manually, I'm going to divide this list up four ways and would it be divided evenly and so on and so on. So I thought there's just got to be a better way. And that's where I started thinking about get jobs. And actually the commands are uh, start job, get job, receive job, and remove job. And what we're the scenario we're going to work with is we're going to do a hundred things ten at a time. So here's the thing. Here's the job that we're actually going to do. We are. My name is script block. I will receive as a parameter the variable i. I will sleep for two minutes and then I will echo back the parameter i. Now within this set of brackets here, we could certainly do any number of complex computer tasks, even computer maintenance tasks, like uh, telling 10 computers to patch themselves while you, while you wait for the entire list of 100 to do it, you'd be doing it 10 at a time. So within those brackets can contain any amount of work that you choose when you are looking to get jobs. Now we're going to create a couple of loops uh, I'm setting that variable i to 0 so that we start at the beginning. Uh, j is going to be 9. And then I'm actually going to do a while loop and a for loop just to demonstrate a couple of different loop uh, methods. So while j is less than or equal to 100, which means we're basically going to stop at 100, and then that's one loop, and you see that ends down here. And then the for loop for the variable i, which we set to 0, while i is less than or equal to j. So from 0 to 9, I'm going to say i equals i plus 1. And that loop goes from here to here. So that means I'm going to go from 0 to 9, passing an argument i, which is that same variable that we're passing into the job here. So you see parameter is received by the job. It can be commented, delimited list of uh, variables that are passed as an argument string. And here I'm creating that argument string, which could be a commented, delimited list of variables. This one just having a single variable i that the job run by script block is going to receive the, le the variable i, sleep for two seconds, and echo back the variable i. So that's going to happen for 0 to 9 during the for loop, and then the while loop, once those first 10 jobs, so I'm basically asking for 10 jobs to happen here. 0 through 9, I'm going to say start job, and start job is run by script block, and he's gonna, expecting these things. And like I say here, you can certainly do a lot more complex uh, computer tasks within these brackets. So don't hold back. And then while I've got those 10 jobs out, I'm going to wait for them to come back. So while get job, I'm saying while any job is running, I'm going to sleep for a second. I put these sleeps in here to slow things down so when you're actually watching what happens. Basically, I'm going to show you task manager and I'm going to show you the separate PowerShell instances. And if I didn't slow it down enough, you never saw all 10 PowerShell instances occur because one would finish before the next one would start. But again, if you've got a lot of complex stuff up here that takes hours anyway, then you would see all those instances in that scenario. So these sleeps are really just to slow things down, and I've kind of tuned them so we're not slowing it down too much. So while all of those first 10 jobs are running, we're going to wait, essentially. Because we're saying, I'm going to do this until there are no jobs running. 
then I'm going to get all the jobs. I'm going to receive the job. See, this is important. You have to receive the job to get your job stuff back. You want the, the work output. Uh, Script Block did a lot of work for us here. And he's echoing back that the variable I. And if you don't have receive that job, you're never going to get the work output from Script Block. He said he was going to do something. You gave him something to do. He did it. But now you got to go collect it. So that's what this get job, receive job thing does. Then you actually want to clean up afterwards. You want to make sure there are no running jobs. And we'll demonstrate what happens if you interrupt in between. If you don't let this happen, then you can have jobs that are still waiting to answer to the boss and, and then have a subsequent run and have weird stuff come back from a previous uh, set of jobs. Then here's this increment of J. Uh, we're incrementing J, adding 10 to J, and then going back to while. So while J, now J is 10. No, I'm sorry, J would be 19. So we're then we counted from 0 to 9 the first time. Now we're going to count from 10 to 19 the second time and go through the same process again. So let's see what happens here. Again, this is the PowerShell ISE. If you're learning PowerShell, you want to be using that. So uh, that just slowed things down a little bit, switching Task Manager to the forefront here, but it'll come back to us. See, you can see the PowerShell instance is dropping off now. There, oh, hey, hey, right there. We got that. I didn't get the, I didn't receive the jobs and remove the jobs from the last session. That's what you saw there. You saw answers coming back from previous jobs. So now you see 20 through 29, 10 more jobs issued, 10 more instances of PowerShell, 30 through 39, 40 comes to 49 comes back. So that's that variable I being passed back by that script block job. And then these are the new jobs being issued, new instances of PowerShell, 10 more answers, 10 more jobs, so on and so on. This is how you make computers work. So actually, if we were to look at the performance, the computer's really not working very hard. It's got memory, all that, whatever. And uh, this is a perfectly capable machine. So it's all done. It did the 100 jobs, 10 at a time. And we can see that. And I actually got to demonstrate what happens if you don't remove jobs. We actually got answers back. Oh, I don't like it when that happens. We actually got b answers back from jobs that weren't received and removed. And then we started again. And you can also see, like, each PowerShell session will re retain the last job number that it was on. So the next job in that same PowerShell session will increment that as well. I saw them doing them sequentially at one point. Now it does it by twos and it's odd numbers. I don't know how that works. As long as the computer remembers where it left off and does the jobs that I ask it to do as quickly as it can, that's what we get with PowerShell. And if you really need to knuckle down and do a lot of work, if, you got, if you're getting a lot of jobs, you need to make it happen multiple instances at a time like we demonstrated that's what you're going to do when you're using start job, get job, receive job, and remove job. And again, you can specify ex uh, computers other than your own computer, as long as all the other conditions are right. Okay, well, thank you very much.